Number 10. Camp Century Camp Century was a military base built by the U.S. on a Greenland ice sheet back in the year 1959. To the public, it was nothing but a science station. But the only science going on here was nuclear. The site was top secret, used for testing nuclear missile deployment from the Arctic. The U.S. needed a base where they could easily hit Russia with nuclear missiles if it came down to that during the Cold War. In 1967, the camp was decommissioned overnight and abandoned. But much of its infrastructure was never taken down or disposed of properly. At the time, the military simply assumed that all the toxic waste and nuclear garbage would be covered by snowfall. So they left behind over 50,000 gallons of fuel, thousands of gallons of waste, and an unknown amount of radioactive coolant. At first, the snow did cover the waste. But as our planet has started warming in recent years, the waste has been revealed yet again. Scientists are now worrying that as the ice continues to melt, all the leftover nuclear waste at Camp Century is going to leak into the water, poisoning the ocean. The camp's infrastructure, as well as any remaining biological, chemical, and radioactive waste, will re-enter the environment and potentially disrupt nearby ecosystems and even human health on a broader scale. Now the question is, who is responsible for cleaning up the waste? This question could lead to a political dispute, and right now, pretty much nothing is being done to fix the problem. Number 9. Hartsville Nuclear Plant Construction of the Hartsville Nuclear Plant began in 1975. It was supposed to meet the electrical needs of Tennessee over the coming years. But back in the 70s, it was the biggest nuclear plant in the entire world. In the sleepy little town of Hartsville, the economy was booming. They were in desperate need of construction workers, there were all kinds of new businesses, and the population spiked. Everything was looking up. Less than 10 years later, everything started going downhill. The decision was made to stop the project before it could ever be completed. In other words, the nuclear plan was scrapped. The remains were simply left abandoned with a few partially constructed buildings still littering the landscape to this very day. The boom in Hartsville went bust, a lot of people moved away, and it went back to being a sleepy rural town. Now all that Hartsville has are tourists who come to gawk at the unfinished nuclear facility, looking like something out of a post-apocalyptic movie. To this day, there hasn't been any real reasons given as to why the project was abandoned. Primarily, those responsible, the Tennessee Valley Authority, say it was a budgeting issue. Number 8. South Carolina Nuclear Fail In 2017, just two years before a pair of nuclear power plants were supposed to be up and running in South Carolina, both projects were abruptly stopped. The owners suspended all work, leaving the pair of multi-billion dollar power plants simply abandoned and completely useless. After the huge failure of nuclear power in the 70s and 80s, these were the first reactors built for a long while in the U.S. They started being built in 2013. But in 2017, the company responsible for the project, called Westinghouse, went bankrupt. The CEO of the company then complained that it was all just taking way too long. They would have missed their 2019 deadline and not have completed the nuclear plant until 2024. Apparently, this was reason enough to scrap the whole thing. Sadly, this was a $7 billion failure. Yep, $7 billion went into this project and it wasn't even finished. And this is in the middle of the U.S. trying to kickstart its nuclear industry, something that's been ignored for decades while other nations have been focusing on it heavily. Number 7. The 1958 Ford Nucleon The 1958 Ford Nucleon was a car that was supposed to drive over 5,000 miles, 8,047 kilometers, without ever refueling. It was going to do this by using a tiny nuclear reactor. It was a typical car for its day, looking like a futuristic vehicle that you might see in the Jetsons. But of course, this was just a concept. The car never actually got around to being built. The problem was that the reactor core, even though it could theoretically have fit into the engine compartment, couldn't be converted to mechanical energy. But to understand this a bit better, we need to look at how nuclear reactors actually work. They generate a significant amount of heat, which boils water into steam, which then spins a turbine to create electricity. But even after the concept for the Ford Nucleon came out, scientists couldn't figure out how to use the heat from a nuclear reactor to spin the car's wheels. And to be honest, scientists still don't know how this works. If you were hoping for a nuclear car, you'll probably be waiting another hundred years. If the Ford Nucleon were a reality, would you drive around in a car that had a nuclear reactor in its engine compartment? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. Portable Nuclear Power 60 years ago, the United States military was experimenting with portable nuclear power across several remote bases. This was back in 1964, during the height of the Cold War. 
One of these devices was the so-called PM2A, a nuclear reactor that required only 44 pounds, 20 kilograms of uranium to power a remote base. Even though the reactor weighed 330 tons, it was built from pieces that could each fit into a C-130, a type of cargo plane. This meant the pieces could technically be put together anywhere for remote nuclear power. The U.S. experimented with this portable power at one place we already talked about today, Camp Century. But they used all kinds of portable reactors in other places as well. They used a different model called the PM3A at a Navy base in Antarctica. But it malfunctioned 438 times in 10 years and leaked nuclear material into the Antarctic Ocean. There was a portable SL-1 reactor being used in Idaho, which blew up and killed three people. And in Virginia, the SM-1 is still sitting abandoned near Fort Belvoir. In the end, portable nuclear power just didn't really seem like it was actually worth it. The idea was scrapped until just recently when the Pentagon initiated Project Pele. This was in May of 2021 with the project aimed at designing a portable nuclear reactor that'll fit into a truck. They have five years to complete the project, so let's just see what happens. Number five, Three Mile Island disaster. In the morning hours of March 28, 1979, the worst nuclear accident in the history of the US took place. It's been compared to the disaster at Chernobyl, but not quite as bad. It happened when the reactor of Unit 2 had a malfunction. A pressure valve refused to close. Cooling water was contaminated with radiation. It drained from the open valve into the other buildings at the site, and within just minutes, the core began to overheat. All of this happened at the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant, which was constructed in 1974 on a sandbar on the Susquehanna River. This place is just 10 miles, 16 kilometers, from Harrisburg. By 1978, many parts of the state were enjoying affordable and reliable energy thanks to the Three Mile Island plant. But back to the overheating. The emergency cooling pumps began to solve the problem by cooling down the core. If left alone, everything would have been totally fine because the safety devices would have prevented a crisis. But humans in the control room misread what was happening and shut down the water system. Silly humans. This resulted in the core heating to 4,000 degrees, just 1,000 degrees shy of a total meltdown. If the core had actually melted down completely, it would have resulted in a huge explosion of radiation, which probably would have killed hundreds and even thousands of people. Even though the plant didn't melt down, it was still a very close call and the closest call ever in the US. Number four, Cherokee Nuclear Power Plant. The Cherokee Nuclear Power Plant was a massive failure. The project began in the 70s, just outside the small city of Gaffney in South Carolina. Duke Power was the company behind the construction of what was planned to be a power plant with three nuclear reactors. But like almost every other nuclear project in the 1970s, this one stalled because of economic issues. In the 80s, all work was suspended and the half-finished reactors were abandoned. The abandoned power plant is still there today. In December of 2007, the company Duke Energy filed an application to build a new power plant very close to the old site. The estimated building cost is $11 billion. As of right now, construction still hasn't even started. And to be honest, it probably never will. Number three, nuclear waste at the beach. The San Onofre nuclear power plant in California shut down many years ago. Unfortunately, it's still a massive problem because there are currently 3.6 million pounds, 1,632,933 kilograms of nuclear waste buried on a California beach. This is San Onofre State Beach, and it would be paradise if not for the giant power plant rearing up above the sand. Still, it's popular with tourists. It's close to one of the biggest Marine Corps bases in the U.S., and there's a Native American site that's over 10,000 years old just down the street. Problems with the plant began almost a decade ago in 2012 when a small radioactive leak was detected. By 2013, the Southern California Edison Company decided to shut the plant down instead of just fixing the problem. Now, the nuclear waste is sitting there, stranded. As the nuclear plant is subjected to corrosion, to the threat of sea level rise, and even the threat of earthquakes, which inch closer and closer to the day of disaster. If nothing is done soon, the nuclear reactor will eventually crack, spilling out millions of tons of toxic waste onto the beach and into the water. Sorry, Earth. Number two, Marble Hill Nuclear Power Plant. The Marble Hill Nuclear Power Plant was a waste of $2.7 billion. Back in 1973, Public Service Indiana proposed to build a nuclear power generator. It was to be located 45 minutes from Louisville in Kentucky. At the time, it was only supposed to cost $700 million. It would employ hundreds of people and be the biggest capital project in the history of Indiana. Naturally, everybody was very thrilled at the idea of nuclear power and more jobs. 
but there was controversy pretty much right away. Public Service Indiana was accused of forging numbers, with experts saying the plant was going to cost significantly more than they estimated. Plus, it was just after the Three Mile Island incident and people were paranoid. Still, they went on with the construction. Between 1973 and 1979, operations were stopped three separate times. There were too many reports of poor construction. In other words, the builders were taking too many shortcuts and building an unsafe nuclear reactor. Costs spiraled out of control, the public was furious, and in 1984, all work at Marble Hall ceased. Even when the plant closed down, they still needed four billion more dollars to complete it. Number one, nuclear secrets. Jonathan Turba, a nuclear engineer with the U.S. Navy, along with his wife Diana, were just arrested in West Virginia for trying to sell nuclear secrets to a foreign state. According to the report from the BBC, the couple tried to sell design data for a nuclear submarine. They handed the designs over, stashed in a peanut butter sandwich, to a person whom they thought was representing a different country. But it wasn't a spy, it was an undercover FBI agent. This is an extremely bizarre case, especially because these people seem so ordinary. Jonathan had national security clearance and his wife was a high school teacher. But in April of 2020, he got caught by the Justice Department sending a package to a foreign government with restricted data, suggesting that he could sell U.S. secrets for money. The FBI was obviously not too happy. They intercepted the package, set up a sting operation, and caught Jonathan in the act. He's been charged with some kind of treason under the Atomic Energy Act. But because this literally just went down a couple of days ago, we're still waiting to see what kind of sentence Jonathan and his wife get once they go to court. How do you feel about all these insane nuclear projects that failed? Let us know in the comments and be sure to hit subscribe. Thanks so much for watching today's video and don't forget to check out all the other amazing videos that we have right here on American Eye.